for the reason why you cannot progress your pull-ups. Firstly, is you're not making them strong, you're just focusing on reps. What I wanna focus on in this video is the fact that you are ignoring movement standards and you are ignoring reps in reserve. So let me go through each of those quickly now. So when it comes to movement standards, I've already done a video which explains how you should perform a perfect chest to bar pull-up. And so I'm not gonna go through that now, but it's really important that when you're training and when you're performing a set, each movement looks the same. Otherwise, it's gonna be very difficult to progress because let's say you start to fatigue and you start doing all this kind of business and just trying to get up to the bar any way possible. We're not training the muscles and the movements that we're really trying to strengthen and that's the whole point of training. We wanna ensure that we know the movement that we're trying to get stronger and we're exposing the same movements to the same stimulus every time. So how does that apply? It means that as you fatigue, your movements should still look the same but slower. Okay, so if I'm fatigued, it's looking more like this rather than just getting up at any cost. If you feel, for example, let's say you're going for that last rep, you're desperate to get 10 pull-ups for some unknown reason, and you're pulling like this, this is perfect. If I see someone fail like this and go down, amazing, because you've tried to maintain the same movement throughout. But if I see you just at any cost, really trying to get up, that's way worse. So movement standards. It's really important that if you're wanting to progress your pull-ups or any movement, that you maintain the same standard of movement throughout every single rep in every single set. And it's the actual movement pattern that breaks down as opposed to you compensating horrifically. So we've now got the movement standard. We now need to apply RIR to that. RIR is a measure of intensity and it stands for reps in reserve and it basically means how many reps away from failure are you? Now, typically, when people are training, especially pull-ups, because they're desperate to get to a certain number of reps, they will typically just max out, which means you are zero reps on failure. We always wanna be around about two to one rep from failure, okay? Now, the useful thing with that is, is that can guide your weight selection or the regression that you should be performing. So let's say I'm doing eight reps with an RIR of two, two reps left in reserve. Typically, that's what I would prescribe in a pull-up program because percentages don't apply so well when it comes to weighted pull-ups. So we wanna ensure that we know how many reps on failure we are to determine the intensity that we want to be at. So I'm gonna perform eight, eight reps, two reps in the tank and I'm gonna show you what that looks like, and then I'm gonna take it to failure, which is where we don't wanna to go to. So RIR stands for reps in reserve, and this typically means how many reps away from failure are you? Now you obviously need to be training for quite some time to figure out where that is, but it's going to be a very useful measure once we get there to figure out where we should be, to figure out how we should be performing a set. Now we already know the movement standard. When it comes to programming, I would typically do two to one RIR, which means two reps in reserve, or one rep in reserve, which means two reps on failure or one rep from failure. Now, I've attached this to me and there's a video that I've done that shows you how to attach a dip belt to you. And the reason why I've attached this is because this is gonna help me to demonstrate RIR more readily. Now, the other thing, quick segue about RIR is it's going to help you to guide your weight selection and it's also gonna help you to guide your regression. So if you see, for example, in the Strong Pull Protocol, the program I've just released, eight reps, RIR two, and you don't know how much you should be doing, that's where you might need to experiment to determine what RIR two is. And RIR two is going to be two reps from failure. So if you do eight pull-ups and you're like, oh, I could have done five more, then time to potentially get a dip belt. So I'm gonna do eight pull-ups now, and two things I'm gonna focus on movement standards and I'm going to tell you when I feel like I'm at RIR2 and the clues will be I'll be starting to slow down the movement and I will be starting to think a lot more about the movement okay so now you'll notice chest to bar every time 
three, four, five. I think I'm five away. Six, seven, eight. Let's test that. Nine, one rep away. Couldn't manage that last rep. When I got to eight reps, I was probably at RAR two slash one, which is where I want you to. But I don't want you to do that 10th rep where you're failing. And that's typically where people are getting to, where they're starting to compensate and where they're ignoring the movement standards, which means they are holding back their training. So key takeaways. Remember your movement standards. Train to two to one RIR. That's gonna ensure that you get the training volume in and that you're training the movement patterns that we want to train. I'm now worn out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.